So, hello everybody. My name is Hong and I am with Cash Property Inks. So, I received a request from a colleague on Bigger Pockets. Uh, it's a public forum that you can go on if you are interested in real estate in any way. So, that's my big shout out to my Bigger Pockets family. So, um, I got a request from one of my colleagues on Bigger Pockets saying, hey, you know, can you take a look at this? Is this a good property to potentially invest in? And so, I want to show you guys the steps that I go through to look at a property and I'm hoping that these steps will help you along your journey. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. All right, and before I forget, I am not a financial advisor, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not an accountant. So all of the information that I'm presenting is really just my ideas, my advice, my opinion. So before you implement any of it, get somebody else's opinion on this sure. show them my video and see what they say okay so just a little disclaimer there so okay so you guys will see everything i see okay so this is the web link that the um that i got so i don't know anything about the property except that it is this address here in southern ontario in oshawa so I'm familiar with Southern Ontario because I grew up there. So I know where Oshawa is. So if you're not familiar with the area, then what you would do is just bring up a Google map and just type in Oshawa or type in that specific address. So go there, type in the address and put in Oshawa. Because I actually do want to see, you know, what else is close by to there. And so just from looking at this, the college is there. And I don't know what road that is. So that might be the 401 going through there. Okay, so what I would normally do is take a snapshot of the different views of that area. So there's the college. Oh, there's the 407. That's good. And then there's the, where's 401? Okay, so there's 401. So it's actually quite a bit of ways from there. And then Whitby is here, so Ajax is here, and then Toronto is over here. All right, so that sort of gives you an idea of how far away it is from Toronto and the 407, so that's pretty good. So looking from the address description, I know it's a condo or it's in a building, and from the picture it looks like from the building. The description that I got from the individual is that it's a studio, a studio condo about maybe 500 square feet so the first thing that i would say is that 500 square feet it's not very big so you're looking at maybe one person living there like a student or two people who are able to deal with close uh close spaces so the thing with getting a mortgage on something that small is that not all lenders will lend you the money um to for a purchase because the the, prop, the size of the unit is so small. So the first thing is to just confirm that your lender will give you the money for that space. So I don't want any more info. I just want to actually see here. So, okay, so yeah, so it says zero beds. So that means that it's not even a bedroom. There's, it's a studio, so it's an open concept. Uh, 175, nine, so, you know, it's cheap and affordable, but it's, you know, it's Oshawa, right? So uh, the description here, fully furnished with built-in bed. So it's a Murphy bed, okay, is what that means. Multi-use tables and desk chairs. Okay, so it, it's furnished, so that's good. And it has a dishwasher. So the thing with the appliance is that I would check if they're full size. Normally with a studio unit, you might not have full size dishwashers or fridge. Um, they they might be more of the smaller size and then is there laundry here Let's see each floor okay so it looks like there's an entertainment room on each floor rent okay so the rent is being guaranteed for a year by the seller so there's a lot of incentives right now because places aren't moving as fast as they used to. So I've seen some places who are offering two years, all the way up to five years of rent guaranteed. So a thousand dollars in rent for a studio unit is pretty good. 
uh, seller will take back mortgage. Okay, so this part here where the seller will take back the mortgage at 0% for one year. So what they're doing is they're going to hold the mortgage for you for one year at 0%, which is great. And then in that one year, you would have to go and either get another mortgage through somebody else or renew with them at whatever rate they come back with that you can negotiate with them. So usually with a vendor take back, you can get fairly good rates, um, like, you know, three or 4%. Some vendor take backs can go all the way up to 8% or higher. So it says it's close to university, so that's fine. Yeah, so that's fine. So this one here, because it's a condo, you're looking at the monthly fee of 218. So those are the condo fees. And that's sort of like, average right so if you take that and you divide it by the square footage and let's just say it's the 500 square feet okay so if you bring up your calculator and you're going to want to do 218 divide that by 500 square feet okay so that's 43 cents per square foot so the way to calculate your maintenance fee per square footage is you take the 218, which is your fee, divided by your square footage. So the 218 divided by, at this point, I'm going with 500 because that's what I was told. Uh, you're looking at 43.6 cents per square foot. So that's actually average, right? From, from the reports and everything I've read in the past about square footage for maintenance fees. Okay. And then last updated, so there's nothing much there. Okay, so to know whether or not this is a good deal, uh, one is you would need to run your numbers, okay? So what I mean by running your numbers is, okay, if you were to buy this at 175, okay, pay a mortgage or pay all the fees and you were to get $1,000 for the first year, how much money would you actually make? And then what happens after that one year? Okay, so, I'm going to bring up my uh, spreadsheet that I use. Now I've been using this spreadsheet for about 20 odd years and I've been making adjustments to it. So don't let it throw you off. Okay. Um, it, it can get a little bit, um, when you look at it for the first time, it can get a little bit daunting because it's like, oh my God, there's a ton of information there. So just keep in mind that I've been looking at it for, and using it for 20 years and I've been adding stuff to it over the years. So it's my spreadsheet that I've used. Uh, it is from uh, Don Campbell's book. Um, and I can't remember the name of it, but I took it from there and then I've been adding to it since then. And so you can get a copy of it from the library and then just make your own Excel spreadsheet from it, which is what I did. Okay. The, the thing that I would suggest with any spreadsheet that you use is understand where the numbers are coming from, understand how one number will affect another number so that if you adjust one number up or down, how that will affect, uh, the end result that you're looking at. Okay, so let me show you my spreadsheet. Share, here we go. Okay, so my spreadsheet looks like this, so don't let it throw you off. Uh, so I'm just gonna put in the address here before I forget it. Okay, so for every property that I look at, I tend to do up a spreadsheet like this, and then I save it along with the, the maps and anything else but I only do this at the beginning. And if the numbers look good, then I look for more things uh, in terms of my due diligence. But if it doesn't even pass the initial number sniff test, then it's probably not a good property to invest in. Okay, so I'll go the address. I leave a lot of that stuff out. So it's not in Toronto, it's in Oshawa, so I'll leave it there. The asking price is 1799, right? I think that's what they said there. Uh, 1759. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to assume that the asking price is the buying price and then the zero bedrooms, current rent. I'm going to put in a thousand. I don't know if that's really a good number or not. Um, from my properties in Southern Ontario, like in Toronto, downtown, a thousand dollars is actually on the low end for even a studio apartment. Right. So um, if the numbers look good with the 1000 
here in this spreadsheet, then I would actually go and confirm that Oshawa would bring in $1,000 in rental income per month. So then, right, so it shows $1,000 a month there. So over the course of the year, I'd be paying, I would be making 12,000. The heat, um, I'm assuming that all of that is included in there already. The only thing that's not included is the condo fees. So it's 218, they said, per month. So then here, I'm just gonna say that times 12. 218, okay. They didn't say anything for the taxes. So I'm gonna go based on $2,000 for the taxes. And so this number you would have to confirm with the realtor, you know, is $2,000 high for a proper, for a condo? Um, it's actually not that high. Um, my condo downtown Toronto, I'm paying 27, 28. Uh, some of my other properties are like 25, 26, but th those are slightly bigger. So 2000, I would say maybe it's on the high end, but you're still looking at 1800, right? So it's better to be on the high end uh, for insurance, maybe a thousand dollars there. So right now it's just a number. So I'm just going to put that in there. Okay. Uh, property management, I'm going to leave at 10%. It's a number that I just leave at 10%, even though I manage most of my properties. Um, you know, if you, for some reason, if you're going to be very hands off, you're still going to want to include a property management fee. Okay. Uh, repairs, 5%, vacancy, 8%. I always leave that there. It's just, it's just an extra cushion that I have that I always leave there. Uh, other 5%, that's for capital expenditures. Normally in a condo, you don't have that, okay? Because the roof and everything else comes out of the maintenance fees. But let's say the dishwasher goes or the, the washer and dryer goes in your unit. You're going to need to pay for those. So I always leave that 5% in there as well. Okay, so right now it's saying that the projected income is 252. This is based on the $1,000 a month rent. Okay, so now I'm gonna assume that you put down 20%. Okay, I always assume 20% down payment. Uh, some lenders will require, require you to put 25, 30. Because this is an investment property, most likely you're gonna have to put 20% or more unless you're gonna say you're going to live there as your primary and then you only need five but then also keep in mind that um you know because of the 500 square foot space not everybody is going to lend you money for that even if it's less than two hundred thousand. okay so based on this you are at a negative cash flow of 500 dollars a month meaning that you have to pay out 500 dollars every month to keep this property Okay, so let's just say that I was way off on this, okay, and your taxes are only $1,000, okay, you're still paying out $420 a month, okay. Uh, the condo fees, that's what they are, so I can't do that. The insurance, you know, even let's say $800, okay, that really doesn't change your cash flow, right, because it's like such a minute difference there. So really the only thing that you could change potentially is, you know, say 0% for repairs. Okay. So at this point, I would actually stop looking at this and be like, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm not interested in this property. But if you are still interested in this, you could play around with the numbers. Okay. I would not recommend you play around with the numbers to make it work for you. Don't, don't do that, okay? There's so many properties out there, right? There's, there's tons and tons of properties out there that really you can make, find another property that will give you cash flow without you adjusting the numbers, okay? But if you had to adjust the numbers, okay, so let's say you got rid of the 0%, you're confident you're gonna have 100% vacancy, um, sorry, yeah, so you're gonna have 0% vacancy and you got rid of this other, so you're carrying no buffer at all you're still at minus $200 a month. Okay, so for me, this property is a no-go from the beginning. Okay, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, simple, right? So, okay, so while I was shutting down, I remembered I forgot to talk about one important point that came up in the ad. So let me share with you my screen and we will talk about this one last point. In the ad, it says that the vendor will 
um, give you the first year mortgage at 0% interest rate. So when we ran the numbers, originally we had 5% down, uh, sorry, 20% down payment with a 5% interest rate on the balance. So if they gave you the 0% interest rate, okay, you still have to pay $390 a month in just principal only. Okay, so unless you make arrangements with them that it's uh, zero, like zero interest, zero principal. Okay, uh, normally in a vendor take back, it's like even if the zero percent interest rate is at zero, like if the interest rate is still at zero, you still have to pay something in terms of the principal. Okay, so I'm assuming that you still put in put down the twenty percent. You're at zero percent interest rate for the first year, so you still have to pay three hundred nine dollars. So here you are in the positive, okay, of $141 each month, okay? So that's pretty good, okay? So $140 a month is pretty good per door, which in this case, it's one door. And normally we, we target like $50 a door or $100 a door, so $140 is pretty good. So over the course of a year, you would make 140 times 12, so that you would make $1,000. $693 for that first year that that seller is holding the mortgage for you. Okay. Now this is where it becomes a little bit tricky because in the second year you have to go and either renew with them at a interest rate. Okay. Or go to an, a bank and get another mortgage. Okay. So here, whether it's, let's say 3%, okay. At 3% interest rate, you would have to pay out of pocket every month. Okay, $61 to have this property. And this is assuming that you are still paying, so you are still making an income rent of $1,000. Okay, so this for me, just because of this would, would be a no-go, okay? Because if I have to pay out every month for a property, then it means I'm carrying a negative cash flow in property, okay? So, so there is the... Um, belief that sometimes it is good to carry a negative cash flow in property. So you're basically banking a property or bank lend, um, banking land. Okay. And so this only makes sense if you know that the appreciation is going to be there. Okay. And with a condo in Oshawa, you just don't know. Okay. If it was in Toronto, I would say, yeah, you have a higher chance of that property will increase in value just from the appreciation. And so buying it as your first or second property might make sense for you to be in the Toronto market, get into real estate. You know, you buy a property, you hold it, uh, pay down the mortgage. And then in a few years, you refinance it, take out the equity and buy another place. Okay. That's a different strategy. If you're looking at buying a property right off the bat for cash flow, for positive cash flow, this property would not be it. You would be paying out of pocket every month. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Hong with Cash Property Inc. We help you, regardless of age, financial situation, and education, get as much money as you want. If you like our video, please click on the like button below and subscribe to our channel. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>